Hi, I'm Leonie from Spines and Splines. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you a method for making a hardcover for an accordion style book without a spine. This type of cover gives the book some protection and structure, but it also makes it possible to access both sides of the paper. The cover that I'm making doesn't have a closure. I tried tying a ribbon around it, but because my book is just so tiny, it didn't really need it. You can use whatever kind of closure you want to, whether that's ribbon, elastic or something else. There's no real right or wrong when it comes to making books. There are a lot of different ways to approach things and sometimes it's good just to try different things out to see what will happen. One thing I did want to do with this book was to paint one side a really hot pink with some drawing ink so that when it's lit up in a certain way, that pink will reflect back on the surface just behind it, creating like a halo of colour. Along with a book to bind, the things that you'll need to make this cover are some pieces of stiff cardboard. I used box board for book binding, but you can also cut the stiff cardboard off the back of an old drawing paper pad and use that if you want to. You'll also need some decorative paper or book cloth to cover your board, PVA glue, a glue brush, a cutting mat, a utility knife, a metal ruler or a straight edge, some waxed paper and some heavy books or a book press to weigh down your book as the glue dries. The first step is to carefully cut two pieces of your stiff cardboard down to size. I'm making my pieces the exact size of one of the paper pages and I measured and marked my cutting points with the book itself rather than with a ruler. When you cut your cardboard, try and keep your knife at a 90 degree angle to the board and make sure that you go slowly and cut with lots of light passes rather than trying to cut through the whole thing at once. This type of cardboard can be pretty hard to cut and you'll be much less likely to slip and your edge will be much neater. I like to cut my second piece of cardboard against the first one to make sure that they both end up as exactly the same size. The next step is to cut two pieces of decorative paper or book cloth to size to cover your boards. I'm using pieces of an old screen print. I have a few videos on screen printing on my channel, so if that's something you're interested in learning about, be sure to have a look. You'll want to cut your paper or book cloth bigger than your cardboard pieces leaving enough paper to glue around the edges of the board. My book is very small, so I just eyeballed an appropriate width. When I make larger books, I cut the overhang to the width of my ruler, which is about 3 cm wide. Again, the easiest way to measure here is to use your pieces of cardboard as a guide. While I'm finishing up cutting my paper, it seems like a good time to remind you that I have a Patreon and you can go and support it. Just like this tiny book, no amount is too small, and every little bit of support helps me make these videos better. When your paper is ready, it's time to stick it to the cardboard. I accidentally glued my paper here instead of the boards, but it's actually easier if you do this the other way around. Doing it this way wasn't too much of an issue for me, as it turns out that my glue is getting on in years and isn't super sticky anymore, but it'll be easier if you glue the boards instead of the paper. Put some scrap paper underneath your work here to protect the surface of your table from the glue. I stick my cardboard down in the centre of the paper and then I trim away the corners with my knife so that when I glue everything up there's less bulk and I can make the edges nice and neat. To do this I make a light guide fold all the way around against the edges of the cardboard 
Then I cut the corners away just inside those fold marks. It's super important here that you don't cut away right up to the edge of the cardboard. You need to leave at least a few millimetres of slack in the paper so that you can completely cover the corners when you glue everything up. When all your corners are cut away, glue the top and the bottom edges in using pressure from your bone folder to wrap the edges around the board and make them as crisp and neat as possible. When you're ready to glue up the sides of the cover, use the pointed end of your bone folder first to push in the little bit of excess paper at the corners and then glue up the sides in the same way as the ends. Wrap both of your covers in a piece of waxed paper to stop any excess glue getting where it shouldn't and leave them to dry for a while under a small weight. When you're ready to add the covers to your book, glue up one page at the end of the book and carefully stick the cover in place. When that's done, glue the page at the other end and stick the second cover in place. Fold up the book and check that the two covers line up and make any adjustments that you need to while the glue is still wet. Put some pieces of waxed paper in between the covers and the other pages of the book to stop any glue from leaking out and leave it for a while under a weight or a book press to dry completely. And that's it, you're done. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking, subscribing or sharing it. If you've got any questions or suggestions for future videos, please leave me a comment. I've listed all the materials that I've used in the description and you'll also find links there for my website, my Patreon, 
Facebook, Instagram, and some affiliate links to art stores where you can buy materials. Thanks for watching. Cheers.